This is the story of how three teenagers built a malware that took down the internet. Let me introduce to you the Mirai botnet, which made headlines in 2016 for having a notoriously strong network of Internet of Things devices, including webcams, routers, DVRs. The most infamous attack that resulted from the Mirai botnet is the takedown of the internet for most of the East Coast of the US in 2016, right before 2016 elections, when it targeted a major DNS provider for millions of internet users. But the most interesting part of the story goes back to the three teenagers who are responsible for creating the Mirai botnet, and that is exactly what we're going to dive into in today's video. Any thank you to IP Vanish for sponsoring this video and more on them later. The story starts in November of 2014, where a freshman college student at Rutgers University named Paris launched his distributed denial of service attack. The reason for this attack was to take down Rutgers servers so by the time it got to class enrollments for freshmen, there were still electives and classes left since first year students typically get to enroll last and have a last pick for classes. Now, as part of his background, Paris taught himself how to code at 12 and in high school was hosting Minecraft servers. This is where he dived into the world of DDoSing, not only learning how to defend against DDoS attacks, but also how to create them. Paris was a highly gifted, highly proficient developer, and in the end decided to create his own DDoS prevention solution, ProTraf Solutions. He would also happen to befriend two other hackers in their late teens, Josiah White and Dalton Norman, who were primarily looking to team up to go after another DDoS gang called VDOS that had been providing DDoS services since 2012, and were headed by two other 18-year-old teenagers. It was essentially a fight between two groups of teenagers creating their own DDoS services, each aiming to take each other down. In Paris's sophomore year, he decided to drop out of college and focus primarily on ProTraf Solutions, which is his DDoS mitigation service, which would also become known as a protection racket, in which case he was still attacking Rutgers with DDoS attacks in the hopes that they would choose his DDoS mitigation firm over another one that they had chosen. So not only was he DDoSing his targets, but he was also offering at the end of the day to help prevent those DDoS attacks that he himself was causing, which I think is a very interesting part of the story, especially considering the age of the attacker, which were 19 and 20 year olds who are essentially trying to build their own business, even if it was using an unethical means. So before I go deeper into the story, let's talk about what exactly a DDoS attack consists of. The main goal of a DDoS attack is to take down services, servers, websites, devices, basically knocking something off of the internet so that it's no longer accessible to its users, to its customers, and clients. The way they take down these services is by flooding servers and websites with a huge amount of requests, typically fraudulent requests, so that it ultimately overwhelms the server and takes down the website. A DDoS attack primarily consists of two entities, the C2 server or command and control, as well as the botnet. The botnet is going to be the devices that are known as zombie devices that are going to be used to create fraudulent requests to whatever target that that the command and control server is telling it to attack. A botnet can consist of various different devices, but what makes the Mirai botnet really stand out is the fact that it focused on IoT devices specifically, especially considering that IoT devices, when you think back to 2016, did not have the most security, whether it be for authentication, for encryption, and even today, IoT devices are very vulnerable, especially considering the fact that most IoT devices don't have security inherently built into them. These are things like your webcams, your smart refrigerators, your smart TVs, your smart lights, and Anything smart in your home, webcam, security cameras, you name it. And essentially, Mirai would scan the internet for IoT devices that were not secure and quickly build up an army of hundreds of thousands of IoT devices over a very short amount of time. And using this botnet, they were able to take down multiple different websites, including PayPal, but also a very well-known cybersecurity researcher and writer named Brian Krebs, whose website was affected by the Mirai botnet and was down for a few days, which was unheard of, especially considering how big of a name Brian Krebs was in the cybersecurity space. And at this point, the trio behind the Mirai botnet had been offering their services for DDoS attacks on the dark web, where anyone can come and pay them money to be able to take down a website, a server, or even someone's specific home IP. Essentially, this was DDoS as a service hosted by a few teenagers in their parents' houses compared to the typical stories that you hear about APTs and nation states attacking government entities. But as all of this was happening, the FBI started to look into the group behind the Mirai botnet and started finding breadcrumbs that led to these three teenagers behind the attack. In fact, the FBI reached out directly to Paris and requested to ask him a few questions, and even though there was no action taken against Paris after that conversation, it still scared them enough that they realized that they didn't want to hold on to the source code for themselves. So essentially, instead of just them having the source code for the Mirai botnet, they released it to the public as open source code so that if the tracks did come back to them, anyone could have downloaded a copy of the source code for the Mirai botnet, and this was their way of trying to get the FBI off of their tracks, which, if you guys can already tell, is going to foreshadow a lot of bad things. So now that the source code for Mirai had been made public, anyone could create their own Mirai botnet 
And this was what led to one of the biggest attacks that essentially took down the internet for most of the US East Coast, which impacted millions of users. On October 21st, a 15 year old teenager in Northern Ireland used a Mary botnet to target PlayStation, which also in turn targeted DIN, which was a major DNS service provider. And this is where everything really came crashing down. So DNS or domain name system essentially works as a directory for the internet. So as an average internet user, when you want to go on a website, you'll go on your internet browser and type in google.com and it'll send you directly to Google. But in the back end, this URL has to be resolved somewhere and that is where DNS comes in. It'll match google.com to its IP address and then be able to take you to that specific website. So in turn, by taking down DIN, which was a major DNS provider for more than 100,000 websites, which means no website was able to resolve their domain name or their URL to an IP address, essentially this took down the internet for millions of people who are no longer able to reach sites. And especially during a time like pre-election, this led a lot of people to believe that there were certain political forces or nation states behind this attack, all while it was started by a 15 year old teenager who wanted to kick people off of their gaming servers. After this major takedown, other attackers started to take advantage of their Mirai botnet to take down other large sites and entities, and the FBI finally caught them in their tracks, specifically Elliot Peterson, who was a primary agent on this case. All right, so with this, how can you help yourself stay secure online to protect your data and your devices? One of the ways I recommend is to use a VPN, specifically IPVanish, who is also the sponsor of today's video. While DDoS attacks can be very common, especially if you're gaming online on a public or private server, IPVanish helps protect you against DDoS attacks by hiding your IP address so the attacker will have no way to identify your machine and target their attack. Not to mention that IPVanish is one of the fastest VPNs on the market, making it exceptional for gaming, streaming videos, and everyday internet browsing. You can try IPVanish using the link in my description. This is especially great for online privacy for anyone who uses the internet on a regular basis. If you're not using a VPN, you not only have to worry about your IP address at risk of being exposed, but you also have to worry about activity monitoring and your personal information. IPVanish hides your internet activity from your ISP or your internet service provider and also protects transactions against prying eyes or anyone who is monitoring your network traffic. VPN encryption is even more important for those who may be using public Wi-Fi or public networks to connect to the internet for either personal or professional usage. You should never be connecting directly to a public Wi-Fi network without having that layer of protection using a VPN to protect from snoopers or anyone else to protect from man in the middle attacks. IPVanish also allows split tunneling, which allows you to run certain applications through your ISP instead of a VPN server, which means you could be running certain services through your VPN and other services and network traffic through your ISP. This in turn adds a layer of flexibility in the way that you stay secure online. If you're looking for a reliable, fast VPN service, I recommend IPVanish because you can secure unlimited devices with just one account, helping you stay secure whether you're using your laptop, phone, or tablet. You can get IPVanish using a link in my description. Using a VPN is one of the easiest ways to protect yourself against DDoS attacks online and to protect the devices on your network. And IPVanish also has over 8,000 positive Trustpilot reviews on exceptional customer service, so you can browse the internet securely knowing that you're protected. Whether it be for IP address concealment, which can help hide your IP address from attackers, making it more difficult for them to target you with a DDoS attack, encryption, which also makes it more challenging for attackers to be able to intercept your network traffic and manipulate the data package used in a DDoS attack, providing anonymity by not disclosing your real identity or location to websites or services that you connect to. This can also make it harder for attackers to gather information about potential targets for a DDoS attack, not to mention additional features like tunneling, traffic filtering, and server protection that can be used to block malicious or suspicious network traffic going to your IP before it ever reaches your device. A VPN can provide additional layers of security and privacy while you're using the internet based on the VPN provider's capabilities and the specific circumstances of the attack. Other ways to prevent DDoS attacks include increasing network bandwidth. This could be scalable if you're using a cloud provider with compute resources that can be increased and decreased based on the volume and the bandwidth of traffic that it receives. Deploying firewalls as well as intrusion detection and prevention systems, aka IDSs or IPSs, using specialized DDoS protection or mitigation services from a third party to mitigate malicious traffic, use rate limiting, IP filtering, and blacklisting, 
for known malicious IPs, as well as of course having redundant infrastructure so there is a backup server or device to ensure high availability and resiliency against DDoS attacks. While there isn't an 100% foolproof way to prevent against DDoS attacks, your best bet is to have as many defenses as possible for the devices that you use on a daily basis, the IoT devices that you connect to the internet, as well as of course if you're in a corporate environment, any enterprise servers, laptops, routers, etc. that connect to the internet. This along with cybersecurity awareness training can really help whether it be an individual or a company prevent against DDoS attacks from small ILT devices in your home to an enterprise scale. IPVanish provides a secure environment for everyday internet activity. And once you establish a VPN connection, all of your online traffic, whether it be web browsing, video streaming, messaging, or file upload passes through their encrypted tunnel while your identifying IP address is concealed. Based on DDoS statistics and trends that we can see in the past few years and decades, DDoS attacks are only going to grow at a larger scale at unprecedented frequencies of to multiple terabytes of requests per second. This is not only going to be something that big companies are going to have to worry about, but also something that individuals are really going to have to keep in mind when they consider their online privacy, as well as the information that can tie back to you and your identity and your location. This is also the biggest reason why I always use a VPN when I'm browsing the internet for anything that I do. And I highly recommend all of you to do so as well, not only for DDoS prevention, but also to just in general, keep your data secure. If you're looking for a reliable, fast VPN service, I recommend IPVanish and you can learn more about what makes them stand out against other competitors using the link in my description. Thank you again to IPVanish for sponsoring this portion of the video and let's get back to the rest of the deep dive. Now what was really interesting about the court hearing for the trio behind the Mirai botnet was the fact that the resolution was five years of probation and 2,500 volunteer community service hours working with the FBI. Again the creators of the Mirai botnet were essentially teenagers and each of them also felt remorse for what they did and what started off as taking down Minecraft servers ended up taking down internets for Fortune 500 enterprise companies and the entire internet which was never aligned with their original intentions. And because of that, the Department of Justice decided not to push for jail time for their convictions and instead Parrish, Josiah, and Dalton, the three behind the Mirai botnet, have been working with the FBI to shut down Mirai copycats as well as preventing and mitigating other DDoS attacks, working with Special Agent Elliot Peterson. You can likely find other documentaries and websites about the teenage trio behind the Mirai botnet online, but I really do think this is one of the coolest stories I've heard, especially considering these three teenagers never expected how devastating the Mirai botnet would end up and the conversion from leading a life as a black hat hacker and converting into a white hat hacker working with the FBI to prevent other DDoS attacks and to use their skills and knowledge, which I'm sure all of us can see that they are highly intelligent, talented young individuals that are now using their skills for good. All right, so that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you like the style because I know this is one of the first deep dives I've done for any kind of cyber attack besides the ones that were more timely like Colonial Pipeline and Log4j. This one is more so a recount of one of the biggest cyber hacks in history created by three unlikely suspects. Thank you guys so much for watching and let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. If you have any other questions, any, any other video topics you would like to see from me in the future, thank you again to IPVanish for sponsoring today's video and you can check out their VPN services and see what makes them stand out to keep you secure against DDoS attacks and other cyber threats using the link in my description. If this video is helpful, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.